Amen. I am so delighted to be in the house of the Lord today with all of you. And I do pray this morning that uh, we understand just how blessed we are to have the privilege to come and to assemble and to experience the love of Christ. Uh, not just as individuals, but in a corporate setting such as this. Those of you that are visiting with us, let me say welcome to you. I did not do that a few moments ago, but we are delighted that you're here this morning. I'm just going to take us right into the Word today, so those that are going to class, feel free to do so at this time. And if you have your Bibles with you this morning uh, in the sanctuary with us, Isaiah chapter number 53 Isaiah chapter number 53 is where we're going to be. As you're turning there, I pray this morning that we will have ears to hear and hearts to receive that which the Lord would have for us this morning. Anybody excited about the goodness of the Lord this morning? Amen. It may be a little quiet today, and I know there's lots of things going on in our worlds and in our lives, but I seriously believe this morning that the Lord wants to speak to our hearts and touch our lives this morning. I feel like that I am here on assignment today, and I may not preach this morning, but I am going to give you the word of the Lord today because we are in a place this morning that we have got to take our heads out of the sand and we're going to have to face the reality today of where we are. And we today, the people of God, I'm going to deal with and I'm going to speak to the church today. And... Uh, and when I say the church, I'm talking to the men and women of faith, men and women that have put their belief and their trust in the Lord. You're the ones that I'm talking to today because I understand this morning that we are living far below the place that God says we can live. This is not about hype. This is not about emotions. This is not about anything other than what the Lord and his word has said concerning you and I. I am disturbed in my deepest part today, in my spirit, in my innermost being, by that which I see taking place not just in the world, but within the body of Christ. Uh, we are a sick and stricken generation and that does not bring glory to the Lord. I want you to hear me this morning. Our responsibility as men and women of faith is to be ambassadors for the kingdom. We are to take the message of Jesus Christ and take it to the world. But in order to do that, we have to walk in his grace, but we also must show forth his glory. You and I cannot show forth the glory of God if we are sick and stricken mentally, emotionally, as well as physically. The CDC tells us this, that six in ten adults have a chronic disease in the United States of America. Four out of every ten have two or more. When I talk about a chronic disease, I'll, I'll mention the top seven this morning. Heart disease, cancer, lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and kidney disease and kidney failure. Those are the top seven. And that is not us even mentioning mental health and emotional health. Can I tell you today that we are dealing with a stricken society? The leading causes of these seven chronic diseases that I just mentioned is tobacco, it's a poor nutrition, it's lack of physical activity, and it is excessive use of alcohol. Now, listen, I know it's Valentine's Day, and I love you. 
Is that all I'm going to say, all right? So I'm not doing this to beat up on us this morning. But how many knows that sometimes love brings correction to us? And I want you to hear me today. I want you to be healthy, not just spiritually, but I want you to be healthy mentally. I want you to be healthy emotionally, and I also want you to be healthy physically. I have, this week, I saw up close and personal what cancer can do to a 30-year-old young lady as I removed her from her home at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's not pretty. Can I tell you, it would be one thing if that was an isolated case, but it isn't. It is a daily occurrence. And what is so disturbing about it is oftentimes it is even those that make a profession of faith. I want to deal with a lot of things this morning, but please stay with me just for a few moments. We were going to be in Isaiah 53, but Larry Stocksell makes this observe uh, this observation when he shares Jeremiah 6 and 14. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially saying, peace and peace, but there is no peace. Another translation says this, they have tried to heal my people serious injuries as if they were small wounds and they say it's all right it's all right but really it's not all right what we're dealing with in america today as well as other places around the globe is that we're dealing with an unhealed church that has deep wounds mentally emotionally and spiritually as well as physically the cross however has no longer became the central theme of our lives and of our ministries and of our focus and therefore we have moved past it but I have to remind you today it is the cross it is only the cross that destroys pride and frees from bondage it is only the cross that releases blessings and it is only the cross that brings people into a place of divine healing when you remove the cross you remove the blessing and it is replaced with a curse I know for many of our churches across this nation today, the cross is considered excessive baggage. It is something that is just a holdover message from the generation before us. And we know this, that some believe that it does not relate to this iPhone generation. But please hear me. While we hide it, while we disguise it, and while we move past it, and while we continue to try to motivate and entertain and impress our members, our members continue to divorce. They continue to be hooked on pornography and every other thing we could talk about. They continue to raise rebellious children and wild children. They continue to walk in a place where there is no peace, no joy, and no health. This is what happens when we forget the cross. And it's powerful message. Therefore, I'm going to take us now to Isaiah 50, 53. In the first few verses of this chapter, we find these words. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and, was este and we esteemed him not. But surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Pastor Parsley made this statement. The Bible not only teaches us to care for our bodies, but also that there is one who by his sacrifice has the authority and the means of healing our bodies. Let me say to you this morning, this healing 
which the Savior purchased for us, yes, is above all for our souls and salvation, but because of our body's corruption is due to sin. When Jesus paid the penalty for our sin, he also purchased the right to bring healing to our bodies. Therefore, in order for us to show forth the glory of God to a generation, we as men and women of faith are to be examples of the love of Christ as well as the healing power of Christ. Notice we are instructed in Romans 13 and 14 to put on the Lord Jesus. We also are instructed in Galatians 3 and 25 that simply says that, but after the faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ, which brings me back to Isaiah 53 and verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We the church of Jesus Christ this morning are to walk in victory as well as in health. But oftentimes that is not the case in our society today. We're trying to get people from one Sunday to the next Sunday just to walk in victory. We're trying people to get from one case of sickness to another case of sickness. We find ourselves today where we have to come back and realize this fourfold purpose cannot be ignored that we find in Isaiah 53 and 5. Notice he was wounded for our transgressions, meaning our offenses. He was bruised for our iniquities, means our immoral and unfair behavior. The chastisement of our peace. What is peace? It is a place of freedom from disturbance, a place of tranquility. But fourthly, as with his stripes we are healed, means to be this, to be sound or healthy again. To correct or to put back in the right manner. How many knows that in the beginning God created Adam and Adam did not have sickness or disease in his body. He was created in the likeness and the image of God. But when you get to Genesis chapter 3 and they walked in disobedience, we know this, that the disobedience of Adam is what brought sin and death upon all of humanity. And therefore, today we must understand that it is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the stripes that he bore that we today are able to walk in a place of healing as well as victory. 1 Peter 2 and 24 tells us, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we been dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Or you could say this, it was by him and through his cross that we was able to be restored. This morning, one of the great truths all throughout Old Testament, New Testament scripture is that of divine healing. You may ask me today, what is healing? Why is it so important today? Notice, this is a truth today that you need to have and to have understanding of. It is possible today in the year 2021 for men to walk in complete health because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ a little better than 2,000 years ago. You do not have to die of what your family has died with for generations. You do not have to allow generational curses to stay on your life. But you can walk in health. You can walk in freedom. You can walk in victory. Just because granddaddy had heart disease and great granny had a heart disease and, and it went all throughout, that does not mean that's what's got to take you out today. Because when you are a born again man or woman of God, not only are you saved and delivered from sin, but because of the stripes that he bore on his back, you are able to walk in health and you are able to walk in victory. This morning, the enemy wants to keep you bound by sickness and disease because when you're sick, you're not able to get off the bed and to fulfill the great commission that God has given us. This is all about the harvest. 
harvest today, my friend. Uh, I, I need you to understand that what needs to happen in America today is men and women of faith must begin to arise and shake themselves and realize uh, that God did not just save them from hell uh, so that they could live in eternity with him, uh, but he saved them and delivered them uh, so they could fulfill that which God has ordained for them to fulfill while they're on this planet for a very short amount of time. Uh, he did not create you uh, to live in a state of misery and sickness and disease, uh, but he created you uh, to take the message of Jesus uh, and to show forth the glory of God uh, to an unknown world. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, it's not okay to set uh, and live uh, in a place of sickness and disease. Uh, you don't have to. I knew you wouldn't shout me down this morning, and that's okay. But there has never been a time in modern history in which we have dealt with more disease and more sickness than now, which shows us prophetically that we are nearing the return of the Lord. For we are told in the last days these things would come. 2 Timothy 3, 1 tells us that there would be perilous times. You also can read in Matthew 24, 4 through 8, that you will find that it says nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, there will be pestilence, there will be earthquakes in diverse places. Listen, we understand. Uh, where we are prophetically by the condition uh, of the world and the condition of the people in the world. But however, uh, the church of Jesus Christ, uh, we do not walk as the world walks. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us uh, that we do not walk in darkness, uh, but we have knowledge that the world does not have concerning the things of God. Uh, and one of those truths uh, that we have is uh, that we are healed by his stripes. Uh, doesn't mean I got to pray today and hope that he will heal me, uh, but he has already bought and paid uh, for my healing uh, and my deliverance. Uh, he doesn't need to go back to Calvary uh, for you to get over your migraine. Uh, he does not need to go back to Pilate's Hall uh, for you to defeat cancer. Uh, he does not need to go back uh, and allow them to open up his back one more time uh, so that you can get beyond the generational curse of your family. Uh, all you have to do is put your faith and trust in him uh, and know this, uh, that there is no devil in hell uh, that is able to separate you from the love of God. Uh, and if I'm not able to be separated from his love, uh, that means I'm not able to be separated from his healing power, uh, from his deliverance, uh, from his miracle working power. Uh, I got to tell somebody this morning, uh, this could be your day uh, to walk in complete deliverance uh, if you just just put your trust in him. The world must see the church walking in a manner uh, that shines forth the glory of God. We do that when we walk in the healing power of the cross. I want to show you uh, what the Bible says about sickness and disease. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm going to read you a bunch of verses from here real quick. Uh, we're going to jump through it, so just stay with me, all right? Uh, he's talking to the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy 28, verse number 1, verse number 2, and then 11 and 13 to kick it off here. I believe he'll put those on the screen this morning. Uh, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, but notice this, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Now, that sounds wonderful, right? But notice what he says. He says, if you'll hearken, if you'll diligently listen, keep the commandments that I've given you, he says not only will you be plenteous in goods, but in the fruit of your body. What he's saying is this, you will walk in health. 
But if you go down a little further in this chapter, beginning in verse number 15, it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the field. All right? But now let's get to the nuts and bolts of this thing. Verse number 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with the blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Verse 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Verse 59, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring up on thee all the diseases of Egypt. Let me pause there for a moment. Egypt is a picture or a type of the world which thou hast, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring up on thee until thou be consumed. Here's what I want to say to you this morning. Sickness and disease, I don't call them this, but this is what God calls them according to Deuteronomy 28. They are a curse. I want that to sink in for a moment. As I mentioned earlier, sin and sickness is the result of Adam's disobedience. Romans 5 and 12 tells us, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all that have sinned. But notice with me, we are not without hope this morning, but God sent his son, Jesus, to redeem us from the curse. How do I know this to be true? Galatians 3 and 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, been made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Which takes me to Psalms 103 this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What's his benefits? Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Which brings me this morning to the place of atonement, the body of Jesus. Do you understand how powerful he really is. He does not just save you. He does not just deliver you from addiction. He does not just make a way for you to walk in a place of victory in certain areas of your life. But through the blood and the body of Jesus, uh, our healing has been bought and paid for. I don't know if you understand this this morning or not, but I pray that you do. I believe that in my most innermost being this morning, uh, that 2021 is a very unique time uh, on the calendar of God, uh, and it is a time where God is bringing health back uh, to his church. Uh, because when he comes back, he says he's coming back for a glorious church. That means this, uh, they're going to walk in victory, uh, they're going to walk in power 
empowered by the Holy Spirit, uh, but also they're going to walk in health, uh, meaning they're going to shine forth the glory and the power of God. Uh, This world uh, is not attracted uh, to Jesus today when it looks at the American church uh, because uh, the condition of the American church uh, is in the same contrast as the condition of the world. Uh, We divorce more. uh, We're sick more. uh, We have just as much issues as everybody else. uh, And then we want to offer them Jesus and say he's the one uh, that will make a difference. Uh, How do they know there's a difference? Uh, We talk about a lot of things, uh, but we don't show forth the power and the anointing of God. Uh, Can I tell you why the church was attractive uh, in generations before us uh, ever since Acts chapter 2 was because there was a display of the power and the anointing of God. Uh, Men and women uh, was used by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to bring about uh, a manifestation of the things of God. Uh, Notice, uh, if you was to read in Matthew chapter 8, you would find uh, that when Jesus walked into Peter's mother-in-law's house and she was lying there with a fever uh, and he touched her hand and she was healed immediately, uh, all of a sudden it caused a stir uh, and that stir began to bring a manifestation of the prophetic word that was given in Isaiah concerning Jesus uh, in such a manner, it says in the evening time uh, in in chapter 8 verses 14 through 17 uh, that they brought to him many that were possessed with devils uh, and he cast out spirits Uh, with his word uh, and it says that he healed all that were sick Uh, everybody they brought to him uh, he began to touch them and speak over them uh, and they began to be healed uh, because uh, it was fulfilling the the prophetic word uh, that Jesus Christ uh, possesses the power and the ability uh, not just to save but to heal and deliver Uh, you may ask this this morning uh, how is this possible uh, and how will I respond by act question uh, is very clear the same way uh, that it has been possible out throughout generations. Uh, today this still rings true. Uh, we are able to walk in a state of wholeness uh, if we will do uh, what the word of the Lord has commissioned us to do very first thing that I would say to you this morning. You say, there's sickness in my body. Uh, There's disease in my body. Uh, How can I get beyond it? Uh, The first thing I would say to you, put faith in Christ. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, uh, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, uh, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, He desires to bring health to you. He desires to reward you. Notice with me, not only are we to put faith in Christ, uh, but you can walk in the power of healing this morning uh, if you're willing to pray the prayer of faith. Uh, Notice James chapter 5, verse number 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing with oil uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, You know why they used oil in Old Testament scripture in the early church as well? Uh, It's because oil was a picture or a type of grace. Uh, What they were saying is this, when they would anoint somebody to pray over them, uh, the prayer of faith, uh, they was anointing them with grace, saying because of God's grace, uh, you're able to be healed. Uh, Because of his grace, you're able to be delivered. Uh, Can I tell you, some of you need a whole bottle of oil dumped on you, because you need to understand that's how much grace that he's extended to you. Uh, We are in a place this morning where we have to realize uh, that it isn't by any good deed that we've done, uh, but it is simply by the grace of God. Uh, that we're able to testify that we're saved and on our way to heaven uh, but it's also by the grace of God uh, that we're able to say that I am standing here healed uh, whole uh, in my mind in my spirit uh, in my emotion uh, but in my physical body as well Uh, you and I need to understand this morning uh, there are many different sources of healing Uh, there is a natural healing Proverbs 17 22 tells us uh, that the human body itself has a healing 
ministry. Uh, it is created to heal itself. Uh, that's why when you can cut yourself, you'll see uh, after a few days, uh, you'll begin to see it comes back together. Your body is made to heal. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is medical healing. Uh, Matthew 9 and 12 tells us and shows us uh, all throughout history uh, that physicians have ministered uh, to the physical needs of people. Uh, and we appreciate that very much so. Uh, but there is also uh, divine healing. Uh, what is divine healing? Uh, Psalms 103 that I read to you in just a moment. Forget not all his benefits. Uh, it means this. Uh, when God overrules both nature and man uh, to bring forth about uh, healing. Uh, anytime he sees fit to do that, uh, he is able to do that. Uh, but what releases him to do that uh, is when somebody puts faith in him uh, or when somebody prays the prayer of faith uh, or when somebody uh, is willing as a believer uh, to lay hands on another. Hear me, uh, Matthew. I mean, Mark chapter sixteen, verse number eighteen. Uh, they shall take up serpents, uh, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Uh, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they might recover, or they could possibly recover. It says, and they shall recover. How many knows that when you're a man or a woman of faith uh, and you're operating in the power of God, uh, you have the ability to transfer uh, the power and the anointing of God uh, into the lives of another uh, in such a manner that healing virtue can come to them. You say, but how is that possible? It's because we are to put on Christ, right? We read that earlier. Uh, and that's why the woman with the issue of blood, when she pressed in through the crowd uh, and she touched the hem of his garment, uh, Jesus said, I perceive that somebody touched me. Uh, and they said, what do you mean? Everybody's around you. He said, no, I perceive that virtue went out of my body. Uh, he said, somebody touched me in faith uh, and therefore moral excellence, moral healing came out of me. Uh, can I tell you when we... We begin to touch the throne room of God. Uh, we can then touch somebody else uh, that is mentally, emotionally uh, in a place of despair. Uh, or when somebody is plagued uh, with sickness and disease, which is a curse. Uh, and we can break that thing in the name of Jesus. Uh, because his grace uh, and his mercy uh, is still been extended today. Uh, can I tell you, I'm so thankful uh, that his blood uh, is still flowing from Calvary today. Uh, I don't have to settle. Uh, for a diagnosis of man uh, but I can walk in a place uh, where there is still power in the name of Jesus now I may really stretch your thinking this morning but some thinks it's just a ritual but it's something so much more than that uh, not only if we put faith in Christ or if we're praying the prayer of faith or if we're laying uh, on the hands of believers uh, but how many knows that the prayer clause still has the ability uh, to transfer the power and the anointing of God Oh, how do you know that preacher? Uh, Acts chapter 19, verse number 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, uh, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. We know there's no power in the cloth other than when somebody uh, has enough faith to believe in the power and the grace and the mercy of God and the healing power of God uh, that by faith they will take a little bit of oil uh, and put it on a little handkerchief and say, take this uh, and go and put it in the care of someone else. Uh, there is nothing, uh, there is no space, there is no time uh, that is able to separate uh, men from the power and the anointing of God. As well as sometimes you and I need to understand this morning that healing still comes with just the sending of the word. We'll spend resources, we'll spend time and energy, we'll exhaust ourselves trying to make something happen when sometimes uh, we just need to have faith this morning and say, you know what, uh, I don't have to drive 10 hours, I don't have to fly 12 hours, uh, but I can just send forth the word. Uh, notice with me, uh, Psalms 107 and 20, it says he sent his word uh, and healed them uh, and delivered them from their destructions. Uh, some of you just need to begin to send the word forth. Uh, 
for your loved ones, uh, for your family, uh, for your community, uh, for your nation, uh, for your church family. Uh, Listen, uh, there is still power uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, His word is still all power uh, and it's still all authority. Uh, I'm here to tell somebody this morning, uh, you can shake off sickness uh, and you can shake off disease uh, if you'll just get under the word of Jesus Christ uh, because it's still healing uh, and it's still delivering. Uh, you got to understand, uh, you don't need to see him face to face. Uh, he don't need to sit down at your table. Uh, you don't have to give him your best dinner. Uh, he's already bought and paid for it. Uh, you don't have to do anything to earn it. Uh, you got to have the mindset of the satirian in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh, he said, Lord, uh, I'm not worthy uh, that you should come under my roof, uh, but if you'll speak the word, uh, I know my servant will be healed. Uh, listen, I'm not worthy for him to sit at my house. I'm not worthy for him to hang out with me. It is by his grace and his mercy that I've been grafted in. But I have enough faith this morning in the word of God that if it goes forth, I know that no matter what the situation is, no matter what the challenge is, listen, we got to get back to where we are under the healing power of God. There is still healing in his name. And this morning, please hear me. Not only is this healing released by the sending of the word, but it's also by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 and 9 tells us, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. That's why we have to get back to in the American church where there is the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit back in the sanctuary of America. We have become so structured, and I'm all for decency and order, but we've become so structured that we've structured the Holy Spirit right out of our services, and we wonder why people walk in and walk out sick and diseased service after service is because we do not allow the gifting of the Holy Spirit to move and to operate when God releases that in our presence. But also today, you and I need to understand that if we're just willing sometimes just to quit everything and to just sit down at the Lord's table, that there is healing. For the sake of time this morning, I'm not going to read it, but I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 32. You'll find talking about, he says, discern my body. He says, when you sit down at the communion table, he said, know this, when you're remembering me, it's a time where healing can can come to your body and bring about restoration. All of these things that I've just mentioned, they're all ways in which divine healing can be received. So then the question must be asked this morning, Why then do we see such sickness and disease not only in the world, but why is the church in America plagued by it? This is the part of the message I wish I didn't have to preach today. Scripture gives us the answer. And therefore, I'm going to give you the answer today. The reason that we're seeing many of our individuals plagued with sickness and disease is not because God doesn't want to heal or is not able to heal, but it's because that we have not kept the faith and we have not walked in alignment with his word. You see, before I give you a list of things, let me take you back very quickly and give you one verse in Exodus chapter 15, verse number 26. It talks about it's a type of healing. It's a healing covenant that was made concerning Israel. Notice what he said. 
And he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Can I tell you, he's a God that does not change. Hear me. He is a God that brings healing to you, brings healing to me. To my mind, to my emotions, to my spirit, as well as to my body. Okay? Now, all of us goes through stuff. None of us are exempt. And know it rains on the just and the unjust, but you hear me this morning. The body will go through the process, and it will heal itself at times. Praise the Lord for that. There will be times when you will go to the medical professionals and they will administer care, and they will help bring healing to your body. I praise the Lord for that. But there are times when you have to have the divine intervention of the Holy Spirit of God and the power of the Word through Jesus Christ, and He still does that because He is the Lord that heals you. But there are things this morning that can keep you from being healed. And it's not because God doesn't want you to be healed, but there are things that are present in your life can keep you from experiencing the healing power of God. And I have come to this conclusion because of the vast amount of sickness across the scope of the church. Obviously, we are dealing with more than one of these. And therefore, I believe it's very important that we self-examine and make sure that there is not things in our life that's keeping us from experiencing what God wants us to experience. Notice with me the very first thing that will keep you from experiencing healing in your body and in your mind and in your life in any manner, shape, or form. This is not so much true for the world. I'm dealing with the church, so please understand this. When somebody is professing to be a follower of Christ, but when you begin to allow sin to be present, you began to separate yourself from the power of healing. You say, how do you say that, preacher? Isaiah 59, verse number 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. I want to be real with you this morning. If you're emotionally distraught, if you're mentally disturbed, if you're physically afflicted, if you're physically dealing with stuff, is it possible that there is things that you've allowed into your life where God is not hearing your prayer for healing today? I'm not judging you. I'm asking you to self-examine because I want you to walk into the healing power of God. As men and women of faith, do not fool yourself. Do not think, well, I, I was under the presence of the Lord five years ago. That's wonderful. But what about today, right now? If he was to come and stand before you, would he be able to say, I am well pleased of you? Think about it. Or is there something in our life that's keeping us from a place of walking in the power of his healing? Secondly, today, notice with me, not only do we see this in Isaiah 59, but in Matthew 13 and 15, notice it says, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Notice, he's saying, I desire to heal but I can't bless sin. Another reason today that we're seeing so much sickness in the church is because unbelief is present. Matthew 6 and 5, this is talking about Jesus. It says, and he could there do no mighty works, talking about it in his own town, his own country, amongst his own brethren, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Notice their unbelief kept him from really operating and moving in the manner that he desired to move in their presence. 
It is not his desire or his will for anybody to walk out of this sanctuary with disease and sickness in their body. But when unbelief is present, it hinders and it creates and builds a wall where things are not able to move in the manner that God desires for them to move. What am I saying this morning? Please hear me. Pray the prayer, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Get to a place where you begin to build your faith. How do you build your faith? Go back to a prayer closet. Go back to the Word of God and begin to stay there until the faith begins to rise. That's why Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. What he was saying is stir up the gift of faith that's in you. Listen, you don't have to get to a super spiritual status in order to experience the healing power of God. You just got to be somebody that believes in him. Darius walked with him and heard bad news. It's over. Don't bother the master any longer. But all of a sudden, Jesus said, just believe only. What he simply said, don't give room for doubt. I'm trying to hurry this morning. Thirdly, this morning is this. The reason that we see such sickness and disease within the body of Christ is because there is an unforgiving spirit that's present. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We also read in Matthew 5, 23 and 24, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother hath an all against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. What kind of gifts do we offer at the altar? It's gifts of prayer. Gifts of voice giving to the Lord. Making petitions. What he's saying is this, I can't receive your petition. If there's unforgiveness, listen, if there's an alt, you're going to have to remove it because that's the very thing that could keep you walking in a place of sickness and disease. You and I have to make sure that we do not have an unforgiving spirit. Let me add to this. If there's an unforgiving spirit, it doesn't take long until there's a root of bitterness that begins to grow. We don't have time for that. Hear me. God wants you healed. Fourthly, this morning, the reason that we are not experiencing healing in the church in America is because we are guilty of abusing our own bodies. I could speak to the medical professions, professionals in this room this morning, and there's a few of you. And you would tell me this, that you probably saw somebody three months ago that you're going to see this month and you gave them instructions, and they have completely ignored everything you told them to do. But yet they want you to give them something to make them better. Right? I pray you're not one of them. It does not make any sense to me to go spend thousands of dollars on doctors and visits and tests and medicines, and then you don't do what they tell you to do. You're abusing your own body. Can I tell you, God does not and cannot bless stupidity. I said it. I love you. Notice 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Know ye not that you are the temple, you are the temple of the living God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And when I say not taking care of the body, I'm not just talking about in the natural thing. But can I tell you, we neglect our bodies because we don't rest properly. We think that we we don't have to do that. But listen, that's not true. We have to make sure that if you read Philippians chapter number 2, 25 through 30, you will find that Paul writes and he says, I'm sending you a brother now that he was near death. And the reason that he was near death was because he simply says, because of the work of Christ. What he did, he overexhausted himself. He, He went 
so far and he, he was so focused that he failed to take care of his natural body and therefore it nearly took him out of the equation. Please hear me today. We cannot abuse our bodies. We have to listen to professionals and we have to make common sense decisions and we have to make sure that we get the right amount of rest, that we eat properly, that we behave correctly. Fifthly, and I'm closing and just give me three more. We fail to discern the Lord's body. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine and 30 says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Listen, we need to make sure that we self-examine. Is my life lining up with the things of God when we sit down at the Lord's table? But also there is times. There are times when we deal with satanic and demonic resistance that does not want us to walk in health and healing because he knows that if we do, that we become a great threat for the kingdom. How do I know this to be true as they come to the piano this morning? In Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, it says, Then said he unto, Dan, said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten therefore before thy God, thy words were heard, and I came for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. What he was saying is this. Sometimes there's demonic resistance that keep you from experiencing your healing. But what do you do in those times? You persevere in prayer. It's a time where you do not back up and sit down and say, well, it's over. No, it's a time when you're not experiencing your breakthrough and your miracle when you think you should. Know this, there's a war in the heavenlies that's trying to keep you from experiencing all that God says that he has for you. The Bible tells us all good gifts come from above. Comes from the throne room of God. He says, I meet your needs according to the storehouses in heaven. But can I tell you that Lucifer... Satan, whatever you want to call him. He is the prince and the power of the air. When God begins to release things from the heavenlies, the prince and the power of the air tries to grab a hold and stop what God is releasing. And one of the things that he grabs a hold most of all is healing for the saints of God. Because he knows that if you're walking in health and strength, that he does not have the ability to stop you or hinder you from doing the work of the Lord. So you got to stand and persevere, pray in faith. Then lastly, I'm going to give you this, and every one of us in this room has dealt with this at times. And you may say, this is, you're getting a little too close, preacher. And I'm going to stand here and tell you, Listen, one of the reasons that we're seeing so many people sick and diseased in body in the church is because of the strained marriage relationship between husbands and wives. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 7 tells us, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as been heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. There's a major problem today in America with the American Christian and the American Christian family. There is no longer a family Bible on a coffee table. There is no longer a time of designated prayer with husbands and wives with their children. I want to talk to every every man in this room just for a moment every husband every father it's time for us to be priests over our homes take your children your grandchildren and bring them under the wing of protection of the almighty God as well as to take the hand of your wife 
and lead her not just to a dinner table, not just lead her to a night out, don't just lead her and open up a car door, but you got to take her hand and lead her to a place of prayer. It's our responsibility, it's our duty to make sure that we do not give place to the enemy in the relationships within our home. If we're not careful, we become so focused and so driven that we neglect those that's closest to us and we allow a door of access for the enemy to come in. And then we walk around and we're sick and diseased and we don't understand why. Please hear me this morning. I pray you hear the word of the Lord today for the sake of the harvest of 2021. We must cry aloud and we must repent. We must turn from our wicked ways and we must humble ourselves in the presence of Almighty God. For He truly does desire to display His glory to the world. And that's why He's simply saying to you and I today, repent and be healed in Jesus' name. This morning, let's begin to defy the statistics of mankind. And let's once again make the most intellectual men and minds of men begin to marvel and say, why is it that those that's in the house of God calling Jesus Lord are not plagued with sickness and disease? Let them once again begin to marvel at the glory and the power of God upon his people. How does this happen? It's when we begin to self-examine and say, God, is there sin present? Is there unbelief present? Is there unforgiving spirit present? Lord, am I abusing my body and manners that I don't even really know that I am? Lord, give me direction and guidance. This morning, you don't have to leave the way you came in Jesus' name. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. As we stand all over the house this morning, I was in my office late last night, and I was just talking to the Lord. And I heard this in my spirit. He said, there's still healing in my name. Well, I began to do a little research and I found a man by the name of Barney Warren. He was born February 20th, 1867. In 1884, he gave his life to the Lord at a revival meeting in Grand Junction. He then joined the Church of God in Anderson, Indiana and was married a short time later. But he began to put pen to paper and he wrote over 2,000 hymns. A couple that he wrote is joy unspeakable and full of glory, lost forever. It's truly wonderful. One that you might be very familiar with farther along. Then he wrote, There is joy in the Lord in 1900. But then also in the year 1900, he simply wrote, There is healing in his name. Here's some of the lyrics that is in that old hymn. Simply trusting in the Savior healing virtue now receive you must never doubt or waver his unfailing word believe casting all your care on Jesus sickness sorrow grief and pain oh believe his blessed promise 
there is healing in his name. Come ye helpless, sick, and suffering, at his feet and meekness kneel, soul and body to him offering, he will all your sickness heal. He is just the same forever, cast away your doubts and fears. From affliction he'll deliver, though you've suffered many years. Listen to this declaration, Christ forever is the same. All the power in earth and heaven is in his majestic name. Casting all your cares on Jesus. Sickness, sorrow, grief and pain. Oh, believe his blessed promise. There is healing in his name. This morning, I don't know what you're dealing with in your life. I don't know if you're mentally exhausted, emotionally spent, or I don't know if you've been diagnosed with an incurable disease, but none of that really matters. What matters most is that you understand before you leave this building today that he is a God that does not change. And in him, And in him alone, there is healing flowing that is able to be obtained by all that will simply put their faith in his name. So this morning, I know it's been a little different, but do you believe? That today could be your day. See, I still believe this morning. I still believe that he's more than able. So if you're in this building under the sound of my voice. And you say, I need a healing. I need a deliverance in my life. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and come and join me in the front of this building right now. I want you to just come and stand across the front of this building. I'm believing God's going to bring healing to you right now where you are. Those of you that are joining us by way of live stream, right where you find yourself today. Maybe if you need a touch, you need healing today. Whatever may be ailing you in your body, by faith, I'm going to ask you to put your hand on that place in your body when we pray together this morning. And I'm believing right where you are, God's going to minister to you and healing virtue is going to flow into the room where you are this morning. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. This morning, I'm going to ask the saints of God, those of you this morning that's in this room with me, I'm going to ask you to come and stand behind somebody that came up here saying, I need healing. And I'm going to ask you to join your faith with them. Some of you men and women of faith this morning, I'm going to ask you to come and help me. Don't be shy this morning. But I'm going to ask you to come and just stand behind some of these women of God. And we're going to pray and we're going to believe God this morning. I'm believing for healing right now this morning to begin to come. And those of you that came, I want you to just begin to pray and say, God, I I receive all that you have for me today. As they minister in song, would you join us in prayer? Lift your hands this way as we just begin to pray over our brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. God bless you. Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Jade Abrams here. I want to thank you for joining us today. And I also want you to connect with us. You can find us on all the social media platforms listed below. And we would love to catch up with you, hear what God has spoke to you, and continue to follow us. And we love you, and God bless you.